Hi, so welcome to your lesson on lipids. This is 2.3 in the biology syllabus. So in this lesson, we're primarily going to be focusing on the structure of lipids and their functions. So the objectives here are to state the monomers of lipids, to distinguish between the structure of saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, and also cis and trans unsaturated fatty acids. We also want to describe the formation of a particular kind of lipid, a triglyceride, by a condensation reaction, and then finish up by describing the functions of lipids. So let's get started. Much like carbohydrates, lipids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They can exist as fats, oils, and waxes, and those may be the ways in which you are familiar with them. And thus, you might also know that they're insoluble in water. They don't dissolve in water. Most fats and oils are of a type of lipid that we refer to as a triglyceride, and that is going to be the kind of lipid that we move on and work with. So when we think about a triglyceride, triglycerides are formed from a condensation reaction between three fatty acids and one glycerol. This is the same kind of condensation reaction that you may have come across in your study of carbohydrates or proteins in the sense that the condensation reaction will form or produce water. So it could also be known as dehydration synthesis. So here we have the glycerol, and these are structures that you're going to need to be able to recognize. The fatty acids that are going to bind with the glycerol in order to form a triglyceride have a variety of different structures. So a saturated fatty acid would look like this in the sense that it has no double bonds between the carbons in the chain. So that's the chain on the right hand side of this structure. On the left hand side of the structure, you can see that I've circled here in red a particular chemical group known as a carboxyl group. So what we really have here is the carboxyl group on one end that you can start to recognize. You may see it in some other molecules that you study. And then this long chain of carbons in which there are no double bonds between the carbons. And that is what makes this a saturated fatty acid. Contrast that with these two unsaturated fatty acids. So at the top, you have a monounsaturated fatty acid. And this is because there is one double bond between the carbons in the chain. This is not counting the double bond that's in the carboxyl group on the left-hand side. So it says monounsaturated because we're only referring to the one in the chain. At the bottom, we have polyunsaturated fatty acids. So this means two or more double bonds between the carbons in the chain. Again, we are not counting the double bond that is in the carboxyl group. But when we have unsaturated fatty acids like this, the arrangement of the hydrogen atoms around that double bond can be slightly different. So we can have two kinds of arrangements. We can have a cis unsaturated fatty acid, and that would be where we have hydrogens that are on the same side of the double bond, that is the top molecule you can see. Or you can have a trans unsaturated fatty acids. So this is when the hydrogen atoms are on opposite sides. So to clarify, cis and trans are reference to unsaturated fatty acids. You wouldn't have this arrangement in a saturated fatty acid because there isn't a double bond in this carbon chain. So in order to form a triglyceride, we would go through a process known as esterification. And that is just a fancy name for formation of an ester bond. And ester bond is the bond that we will find in a triglyceride. So here we have the glycerol and one fatty acid. Note that at the end, we're going to have three fatty acids joining, but we'll just show the condensation reaction with one fatty acid to start. So what happens here is we take two H's, two hydrogens and an oxygen that would ultimately then produce this molecule H2O we know to be water. So once the water is removed, you're going to join the carbon on the right hand side with the oxygen on the left hand side, and that forms your ester bond. So the end product here, if we do this three times, three fatty acids and one glycerol, 
is that you would end up with a triglyceride. And that's the process of esterification. Because it produces water, this can also be known as a condensation reaction or dehydration synthesis. The term esterification is just used for the formation of a triglyceride because that's the only molecule that you're going to find the ester bond in, in so far as the molecules that we are studying. This can also happen in order to form a phospholipid, with which we are familiar because phospholipids are the main component of a cell membrane. So in this case, instead of having three fatty acids and a glycerol, you would have two fatty acids, and then in place of the third fatty acid, we have phosphate group. So finally, the functions of lipids. There are many, um, but we will focus on a few here. So the first one here would be that lipids are more suited to long-term energy storage than are carbohydrates. Lipids also form um, a vital protection around a number of organs in the human body and in other organisms. They also serve to prevent evaporation in plants and in animals, and they're used to insulate the body to maintain heat inside the body. We are familiar with them as a component of cell membranes, as I just mentioned. And finally, later in this course, you may study the passage of a nerve impulse along a nerve cell, and part of the structure of a nerve cell is the myelin sheath around the outside, and lipids form an important component of that.